Welcome back, Odooers. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a simple process of creating an events template in the Odoo Events app. Event templates are a great way to save time during the event building process, and they could be customized in a number of different ways. But why am I still here chit-chatting about it when I could just show you? So come on, let's dive into our database to see what the event templates in Odoo are all about. Let's kick things off on the main dashboard of the events application. From here, let's go ahead and select configuration and events templates. Doing so takes us to the event templates page where we can find a list of all the existing event templates in our database. Now, if we wanna modify any of these existing templates, all we'd have to do is click on one and we'd be taken to that event template form where we can make any modifications that we'd like. But for the sake of the video, I wanna show you how to create an event template from scratch. And in order to do that, all we have to do is click the new button in the top left corner. As you can see, clicking that button reveals a completely blank event template form that we can configure in a number of different ways. So let's take care of that now, shall we? First off, let's make sure that this template has a name. Now, let's say we're starting to do more online and in-person events, and I wanna save some time in the planning process by creating an event template for just such occasions. So let's go ahead and name this template virtual slash in-person expo. Great, looks good. Now, underneath the event name, there's a series of checkboxes, all of which are related to how the event will be displayed on the event-specific website. Each of these options provides specific things to our event website visitors. Now, watch what happens when I tick the first checkbox for website submenu. The rest of the checkboxes are automatically ticked. You may notice a new checkbox appeared when I did that as well. You can see the allow room creation that happened because the community checkbox was ticked, which reveals the new option because it is directly related to the community selection that we just made. Then we can also go ahead and pick and choose which elements we want to keep or remove from the event submenu. For example, let's say there are booths that are typically already sold when it comes to events like this. In that case, we want to go ahead and untick the booth menu item. That would lead visitors to a page where they would be able to purchase event booths from us. Also, let's imagine that we usually have a packed schedule full of tracks and talks already planned for events like this. With that in mind, we can go ahead and untick the track proposals menu item. That way, visitors can't go ahead and click that submenu link and propose talks to our event. Learn more about these checkbox submenu options. Feel free to refer to our documentation about them, which I'll go ahead and leave a link to in the description below. All right, since we're on the west coast of the United States, let's change time zone to America slash LA. Perfect. And let's also go ahead and add two tags, online and conference. These tags not only help us with organization and analysis in the back end of the events app, but they also appear on the front end of the events website, helping our visitors know a little bit more about the event. Let's go ahead and also leave this limit registrations unticked because I don't wanna put a limit on how many people can attend events like this. That can be changed on the event form itself anyways. Now, we've already covered how to create tickets, communications, and questions in another video and in our events app documentation. So be sure to check those out for a quick refresher if you need to. In the meantime, let's quickly add a sample ticket for this template and go to the tickets tab here. And we're gonna select add a line and type in free. We're gonna go ahead and keep the product type as event registration, but let's go ahead and change this price to zero. And we can always add more ticket tiers for this template whenever we want in the same way, but let's go ahead and move on for now. Jumping to the communications tab, we can go ahead and add another example here. So let's click add a line, change this to SMS, set this as an event reminder, and we can go ahead and leave the current configuration of one hour before the event. Perfect. Also, just a super quick note. In order for SMS communications to be sent, you will need IAP credits in your database, which we'll cover in another tutorial. So be sure to check that out for more information. Now, let's go ahead and hop into the booths tab here. Here's where we can go ahead and configure different booth tiers that we can sell to potential partners and businesses who'd like to shop at our event and interact with our attendees. To quickly add a booth, we're gonna go ahead and select add a line here, and we can go ahead and see this create booth pop up. So let's give this name, this booth a name like basic booth expo. And then within the booth category, we can go ahead and select standard booth. 
And you'll notice the rest of the fields auto populate based on the configurations for the specific standard booth category. It should be noted that a new booth category can be created directly from this pop up by typing in the name of a new booth and clicking create or create and edit from the resulting drop down menu. Or they can be created from the booth categories page located under the configurations menu that I just mentioned. Existing booth categories can be modified as well, either by clicking the internal link icon right here of the booth selection and or by going to the configuration booth categories. So you do have a couple of options there. But for us right now, we're simply looking to lock this in. So let's go ahead and hit save and close. And boom, a booth here has just been added to this template. Super easy, right? Next in the questions tab, we'll go ahead and add another example here as well. Real quick, let's go ahead and select add a line and add a question asking our attendees what they're looking to see, looking forward to see at the event. Then we can go ahead and select text input and keep this open ended and we'll go ahead and select save and close. All right, and lastly, let's open the notes tab and leave a couple custom notes here. Should be noted that this tab accepts form builder inputs. So things like bullet list or check boxes for internal team members are permissible here. But for this template, we'll keep things simple and just add a basic note. So let's go ahead and add a note here. Make sure the speakers are prepared before the big day arrives. And in the ticket instructions, we're going to go ahead and add a reminder to arrive 20 minutes early before the start of the event. And then here we can click save. Okay, nice. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you quickly create an event template in Odoo events. But now it's time to see this thing in action. So let's go ahead to the go to the top, click events, and then we're going to go ahead and select new to open and create a new event. Now for this, let's go ahead and title it new expo or new product expo. The date field, let's make sure it starts with today, which it is. And we're going to have this last for a week. So for the second date, we'll go ahead and extend it for an additional week. And then select apply. Now, before anything else, let's point out a couple things. In the smart buttons at the top, you'll notice there are no booths added. You'll also notice the time zone is currently set to Europe slash Brussels, and there are no tags. It's a blank canvas overall. But if we go ahead and go to templates, select our virtual slash in-person expo, you'll notice that the booths tab is now populated. And we also have a time zone to LA. We also have our online and conference tags here added at the bottom. And if we look at the tickets tab, we have our pre-configured tickets question here. The communications tab, we have our SMS reminder. In our questions tab, we have the question we just added. And then of course, here in the notes section, we have the couple notes that we just created a few moments ago. Look at that. All that time we just saved, pretty cool. Now, obviously, all these configurations can be modified to fit unique needs, but at least we can build off an event template so we know we have the core elements of what we want for this type of event. And if we click to the Go to Website Smart button here, it takes us to the unpublished page of this event, which we can customize through the Edit button here on the top right corner. In addition to that, you'll notice that our events website submenu options that we set up earlier are here waiting for us as well. Man, I love it when things work out perfectly, don't you? And there you have it, Odurs. You now know how to quickly and effectively create templates for any event imaginable, which saves a ton of time in the event building process, as you just saw. That's all for now, but stay tuned for more event-related awesomeness coming your way. See you soon, Odurs.